Hi guys, we have a little bit of a different video here and I'm excited about it. It's super windy outside. I was gonna go on a different trip, do a different adventure, do a different video, but it's extremely windy outside, so that'll have to wait for another time. I'm out in the high desert of kind of east central Idaho. On a recent video of mine, I introduced you guys to Linda, who lives full time in her SUV in her Toyota Highlander, and she sleeps in the front seat of her car. She doesn't have a bed set up in the back, she sleeps in the front, that's how she prefers it. I have slept in the front seat of my car one time. It was probably 10 or 12 years ago at this point. I got a flat tire out in the desert and uh, it was getting late when I got the flat tire and so I kind of was forced to sleep in the front seat of my car. And this was just a regular car, this wasn't an SUV, so I didn't have a, a camping setup, a sleeping setup in it. That was not a great night, it was unplanned, but uh, I figured I would try it again tonight. So tonight I'm gonna sleep in this spot, in the driver's seat, the front seat of my car, of my RAV4. So I'm parked and camped alongside this creek here. Beautiful creek. I'm out in the high desert of kind of eh, east central Idaho. I came here to fish, actually. I'll be fishing here tomorrow morning. Hopefully the wind has died down. I'm in this valley, this beautiful valley. Check out these mountains back here. This pointy one in the middle here is called Diamond Peak, I believe. And that's one of the top 10 highest mountains in Idaho. I think it's like the sixth or eighth highest mountain in Idaho. Just a gorgeous spot out here. And then here, the sun is just blaring, can't really, or blazing, can't really see out here. You can kind of see the rest of the creek out over that way. Again, kind of a shockingly beautiful and stark landscape out here. But uh, it's late, it's 7.20 right now, after dinner time, and so I'm gonna make dinner. And I'm gonna do it right here in the front seat of the car and take you guys along with me. So we're gonna be having a salad Nothing too fancy, just a uh, basically a Greek salad, a simple cucumber tomato salad. We've got an orange bell pepper here, got a cucumber, some olives, some feta cheese. Man, isn't that view amazing? I love this. And then finally, some cherry tomatoes. All right, let's start off with the cucumber here. Whip out our knife. Just gonna cut off the ends and then cut up the cucumber into smaller pieces. Do I have a trash? What can I use as a trash? I have a, my car is kind of a mess right now. I have a McDonald's bag here from a couple days ago. I'll use that as a trash. Let's add in some olives. These are sliced olives. Stir it all up. The great thing about this, oh, I didn't cut this up. The great thing about this salad is that it's hearty. You know, there's a lot of, this is, there's some bulk in this salad. This, this is a heavy salad. <laughs> you could add black beans for some protein if you want. I've also added pepperoni. That's good in here too. They even have these little like mini pepperonis that are made for salads and that sort of thing and those are great in here. And then I don't like salad dressing in my Greek salads, even just like uh, olive oil. I like just pepper. This is already salty enough with the feta and the olives and then the pepper just gives it a nice a little bit of bite, a little bit of extra flavor to it. I have a mark on my forehead now from the GoPro. Ignore that, please. All right, this is the final result. Colorful, beautiful salad. Mmm, so good. Again, nothing fancy, very simple. Uh, you can even make this at home and bring it with you on trips. It, it'll keep pretty well in, the, in your cooler or fridge, better than like a uh, lettuce-based salad will, I think. So I'm gonna chow down here, eat as much of this as I can, and then uh, I'll touch base with you after that. Well, that was delicious. I ate the entire thing. 
I'm still a little bit hungry, so I might have some cheese and crackers. I've got my pile of bedding right here. So the plan, let's see how far back this thing goes. It goes, I tested it earlier, it goes back pretty far. And without that bedding there blocking the way, it'll go down uh, even, even farther. It'll get down, not horizontal, but acceptably close to horizontal, if that makes sense. For now, I'm just gonna kind of wrap a sleeping bag around me and watch some Netflix. But uh, once it gets closer to bedtime in a couple hours, then I'll talk a little bit more about exactly what my plan is for the night. All right, it's 11 o'clock, I'm tired. It's time for bedtime. Let me show you my setup here for the night. Let's see if I can prop this guy up over here. So this is the seat in the normal position. And this is as far as it goes. So pretty far back. I don't know if it'll really come through in the video, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. This is, this is workable. I can work with this. Over here we have a couple of, of uh, small kind of travel sized pillows. Over here, this is the bulk of my bedding, the bulk of my insulation. We have this big mess right here. This is a sleeping bag. This is actually an electric blanket, a heated blanket that I can plug into the into my jackery if I need to. And then these plaid things here are a couple of pillows. What I'm most concerned about tonight is my feet getting cold. So this is the the footwell area. This is where the uh, you know the pedals are down here. My feet are in a sleeping bag right now, but you can see the the pedal right there. I put one pillow, again, the plaid thing down there on the floor of the car, on the, on the, the, uh, the mats down there, on the mat down there. I wanted to give a bit of insulation between the floor of the car and my feet. And my feet are already a little bit chilly right now. And so I might have to stuff another pillow down there, or I don't know, I don't know what I'll do, but and I, you can see that I have some jeans down there too. I'm wearing sweatpants right now. I took my jeans off. And so uh, the jeans are adding a little bit of extra insulation down there. So th those are my feet, that's where my feet go. And I'm in one sleeping bag here right now. So the plan is to try to fall asleep on my back. Uh, sometimes I'm a back sleeper, sometimes I'm, I'm a side sleeper, both sides, and sometimes I'm a stomach sleeper. So it just depends how I feel at that particular moment. I'm hoping tonight I can sleep most of the time on my back. Uh, if I need to stretch my legs out, you know, I can, I can stretch my legs out fully right now. And I read in, in a comment on the channel recently, someone said that they put a little footstool, a little collapsible footstool down by the pedals here to uh, to rest their feet on. I'm too long for that. That's not going to work for me. You know, this really isn't that bad. Wish me luck and I will see you in the morning unless I have some messages for you throughout the night, unless I have the presence of mind to wake up and keep you updated. But otherwise, good night. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, everyone. I survived, obviously, but it wasn't great. I got probably six hours of sleep. That's my guess. It's eight o'clock now. I've actually been awake for a couple of hours just laying in my sleeping bags here. I wasn't too cold. That wasn't an issue. I was actually nice and warm and cozy, but as expected, uh, this really isn't the best setup for me. To be fair, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I did get, you know, an acceptable amount of sleep. Not great sleep, but it was acceptable. I found that the, um, the best position was when I was on my back and I can actually put my feet on top of the brake pedal. There's barely enough room for that. You know, it's good to know that this is something I can do in a pinch if I need to for whatever reason, but it's not something I'm gonna plan on doing for uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, so overall, it went better than I expected, but I think I'm gonna stick to sleeping 
in the back here. This is actually a, a viable option for people who don't have a vehicle that they can stretch out and they don't have uh, an SUV or a van or a truck. If you're just in a car, this is actually a viable way to have an adventure vehicle. It may not be the most comfortable thing in the world or what you're used to, but I mean, if it gets you out and gets you exploring and you know, it's a cheap way to travel, then I think it's worth getting, a, you know, a couple of rough nights of sleep in order to have the kind of freedom that, uh, that I think a lot of us are after. So give it a shot if you have a car. And even if you don't have a, like a sedan, try it. Maybe you'll like it, who knows? So anyway, let's try going outside now. Here we are, beautiful morning. It's such a beautiful place, I love this area. Again, that's Diamond Peak, the one that's sixth or eighth or ninth or something highest mountain in Idaho, just in this high valley out here in the high desert. It's such a cool spot. I think I'm gonna end the video here, guys. I will fly the drone or try to, wind permitting, and uh, get some aerial views of this area, but um, Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this little experiment in, in a pretty place. Uh, I'll definitely be coming back here in the future to explore more. There are like canyons and caves and all sorts of cool stuff to see and do around here. So here's the drone footage. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know what your experiences have been sleeping in the front seat of your car. Mm -hmm.